we are very happy to host in uh, this course on Indian Online Systems, Professor J.R. Bhattacharya, who is a well-known scholar of Sanskrit, Prakrit, and Pali, and also deeply versed in Jainism and Buddhism, both the literature as well as the philosophies and religions. He's currently teaching at Vishwabharati in uh, Shantiniketan, uh, after having taught at other universities. And uh, he is also a member of the Center of Jain Studies at the well-known School of Oriental and African Studies uh, in uh, University of London. Uh, he will be giving us two talks. One is on Jain canonical literature, which basically comprises all the fundamental texts of Jainism, uh, especially as far as philosophy and religion is concerned. And the second uh, is a lesser known field, and that is Prakrit dramatic literature. The Sanskrit dramatic literature is reasonably well known, but the Prakrit dramatic literature has been somewhat neglected. And uh, Professor Bhattacharya will be giving us an overview of the different categories of the genres found within Prakrit dramatic literature. And he will show us how rich uh, this field is and uh, how uh, much we should do to develop it and explore it further. Thank you, Lisa and uh, Professor Michel Danino and uh, my dear students, participants. Uh, I'm happy that, uh, to be here with you uh, for the discussion of very, very uh, rare subject that is Prakrit. And yesterday we dealt with the uh, canonical Prakrit. And today, of course, there's something different, and it is the dramatic Prakrit. Or the position of dramatic traffic in traffic literature. So let me start the slide first. And uh, I'm starting with the map of India of 600 BC. Uh, just to show you that the place named for different types of traffic. And uh, you see that here it is Magadha that being encentered with Magadha, the whole region is uh, known for the Magadhi Prakrit. And in the same way, you can see that Shurashena here, and taking the name of the place Shurashena, modern Mathura, this region. And the language of Diren India of that region is called Shaurashet. Uh, since uh, on the basis of language, uh, this map is not made for that purpose. So I am only just uh, showing you the places where those types of prakrits actually fell. And you see that here Avanti, and Avanti, the place. Here, Avanti, the subdialect of Saurasheni is Avanti in this place. And this Gujarat area it is partly influenced by Prakrit in general or Maharashtra Prakrit. And didn't Dakshinatta, almost this area, it covered the Prakrit called as Maharashtra Prakrit or Prakrit in general. That is, today it is called Marathi or Maratha area. Apart from these places, uh, we can uh, understand the, some other practice. We know that some of the names of practice. Uh, suppose Ardha Magadhi, yesterday we have discussed a lot on Ardha Magadhi. The area, something covered of Magadha as well as some, some areas with Surashena, Surashena. This area may be called as Ardha Magadhi. And uh, Unfortunately, I have taken this map from Google Images, and uh, although it is 600 BCE, the actual map of India is not shown here, and 
still some of the portions has been shown as the part of white cash was there and it is not in there i'm sorry for that but i had no choice so i had to collect this one anyway this is the uh, greater india and so this uh, uh, yellow part it is also given indian part even gandhar kandahar gandhar the afghanistan that is also in the part of india on the other hand if go if you go to the eastern side even to this bangladesh myanmar thailand and southeast asian countries those all have been uh, under the uh, area of bidden india so uh, because uh, i have to show this map just to understand the language prakrit language based on particular places so uh, next uh, okay. let us see the uh, map it is uh, quite okay very good map for india so uh, we can see that uh, unfortunately that uh, from the right part as well as the left part these are divided from india and if we say that that central part of india that time it was the central part of india and after cutting the wings of the right and left even then this is the central part of india so central part of india the language belongs to the central part of india it is uh, shorosheni so we should be practical so uh, let us have the next slide now different types of prakrit uh, why i am just inclining to show you different types of prakrit because uh, prakrit is not one prakrit by the name of sanskrit we understand that sanskrit is a word if you speak sanskrit anywhere in this world so the sanskrit is one there is no difference of course the some uh, regional words some regional technical terms are included in sanskrit and those are specialized form of that particular areas but sanskrit is one i repeat sanskrit is one but in case of prakrit prakrit different types of prakrits are there one is uh, first is written the maharashtri prakrit is known as prakrit in general now onwards if we say that prakrit that means it is maharashtri prakrit <clears throat> so other major prakrits are shaurasheni magadhi ardh magadhi paishachi chulika paishachi and apabhramsha and so on <clears throat> in the same way there are some sub dialects that shaurasheni has a sub dialects such as prachya and abanti magadhi has some sub dialects these are shakari shabari chandali dhakki or takki etc <clears throat> so uh, when we say that prakrit the language so it is not represent or not only represent the jain canonical literature there are enormous enormous number of literatures where prakrit is independently known as the language of those non canonical or non jain literatures uh now in this slide i would like to make it Uh, slide clear that uh, just uh, you visualize your own regional language and uh, you think that almost every 30 20 25 or kilometers away the language changes automatically in its own form different form and the changing of language in whole the land actually it is analogous it is not digital as uh, if you just uh, walk from here to south india so if you walk so you will find that something is changing the language is changing but it is quite adaptable but you fly from here to trivandrum or anywhere else so Uh, you will find there are lots of differences because that is a digital mode of your changing of language what you realize 
But analog, analogous, if it is analogous, if it touches all places, so something is living, something is accepting, like this of giving and taking, giving and taking process, the language changes. And certain 50, 60, 70, 100 kilometers away, you will find something, uh, something visible change in the language. But this is the, uh, whatever it is mentioned here is the sub dialects and so and so. So sub dialects does not mean that particularly this area only sub dialects. Even there are changes, lots of changes in the language uh, in terms of the, uh, their geographical position. So, <coughs> sorry. Uh, we know that uh, the Shwetambara of canonical texts, so those are written in Ardhamagadi, and the Digambara texts, these are written in Shaurashani Prakrit. So in the, uh, in the same uh, context, the some text we have named yesterday, that Acharanga Sutra, Sutra Kridanga Sutra, Bhagavati, Samavayanga, Uttaradhyana, Dasavai Kalika, etc. Those the texts are written in Ardhamagadi Prakrit, and those are known as the canonical texts of the Svetambara sect of Jayas. In the same way, the Digambara texts are Shatkhanda Gama, Kashaya Pahura, Prabhachana Shara, Niyama Sara, Panchastikaya, and Drabha Shangraha. So the, all the Svetambara texts are written in Ardhamagadi, as well as the Digambara texts are written in Shaurasheni Prakrit. Or uh, historically, uh, those uh, texts were composed in the fourth century CE, and the 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 verbal tradition from the verbal tradition of the Shwetambara uh, sect, and it was compiled or composed in fourth century CE. And uh, but the Digambara canonical texts, the Digambara texts are compiled. It started from first century uh, CE, or that early Christian era. So apart from these uh, canonical texts or Jain texts, let us see some uh, texts which are not related with uh, Jainism as well as maybe Jainism, but it is in pre-Christian era, some texts are available. So the first ever the dramatist, uh, Ashwagosha and Bhasa, uh, they actually that uh, uh, written, they have written their uh, dramas or composed their dramas. And we say that pre first or second century or like that time. And at the same time in first century CE, there are two very important texts, the Jaina Ramayana, that is the Pauma Charyam. It was written by Bimala Suri. It is uh, almost in first century CE. And at the same time, there is uh, the text that has uh, no relation with the Jainism. It is the Gatha Saptashati of Hala or Gaha Saptasai. It is, uh, so it is in the period of first century CE. Let us have the next uh, slide. Now let us come uh, gradually, we will enter into the uh, area of the Sanskrit drama or drama in ancient period. So first uh, that we can uh, uh, take the name of Bharata. And uh, Bharata, I told you started that uh, the period is third century CE. And he is the first pioneer of uh, that uh, dramaturgy text and it is called Natya Sastra. And there he prescribes that the persons in the Sanskrit drama, like the king, the gods, devas, the rishis, and the people, those who represent the elite society, within elite society, they speak Sanskrit. On the other hand, the characters uh, like women folk, general women, and uh, the gesture, the clown or the uh, assistant of the king, the servants and people belong to the lower strata, so-called lower strata have been prescribed to talk Prakrit. Though those are people who are very close to the Sanskrit speakers, uh, for example, with the king, suppose the queen, the jester, they speak Shaurashini. 
and the very first map, as I have shown you, the Shauroshani, the Surashana area, it is the midland of India, and that is the proper place of Sanskrit, as well as that colloquial language or the language of the common people, where uh, that time was the Shauroshani Prakrit. So it is uh, quite understandable that the people, those who are uh, associated with the Sanskrit speaker, very closely associated with the Sanskrit speaker in the Sanskrit drama, they speak Shaurashini. So for example, the Quinn and the Jester. Okay. And the, all other characters, those were uh, not so uh, major characters, uh, they, they speak Prakrit or the sub-dialects of Prakrit. Now we will jump from the Sanskrit drama to the Prakrit drama. So uh, the Prakrit drama, which is uh, written is completely in Prakrit. It is called Sattaka. I will come that how many types of dramas in Sanskrit or it is prescribed by Bharata. I'll come later on. Just to, uh, for the introduction, I am saying that like that of Sanskrit drama, there are some Prakrit dramas where all the characters speak Prakrit, irrespective of the king, gods, or any people associated with the elite class. So first that uh, Sattaka, it is called Sattaka. It is written by Raja Shekhara, and it is named as Karpura Manjadi. The period is 10th century CE. In the... <laughs> In other practice that uh, Prabharashena's Setu Bandha, although it is not a drama, and Bhakpati Raja's Gaudaba, almost 5th, 6th, 7th, 7th centuries, these are renowned Mahakabhyas, and these are written in Maharashtri practice. I want to tell you just uh, to uh, give you the glimpse of that uh, literature, which are written and very, very famous literature, and absolutely, surely written in practice, not in Sanskrit, although it, they have no relation with Jainism or any Jainistic philosophy or like that. So, uh, and in many, many Sanskrit uh, uh, rhetorics, Alankara Shastra, many examples have been given. Sanskrit rhetorics, examples are given from Prakrit texts. That is very interesting one. Now let us see that how many types of dramas in, in Sanskrit or ancient India we can say. Uh, generally in English, we say drama, we say play, we say act, or almost like these words are uh, available. But from very uh, earlier stage of Sanskrit literature or later on anyway, there are 10 Rupakas this 10 rupakas, what you say that nataka or drama, actually that is nataka is one part of rupaka. It is not the whole. Rupaka is the whole and nataka is a part of rupaka. So that is why you, you see here that the nataka, prakarana, bhana, prahasana, bhima, vyayoga, Samavakara, Viti, Anka, and Ihamriga. These are 10 types of dramas, actually. We cannot say only Nataka. Generally, we say Nataka. Generally, we say Sanskrit drama. But these are 10 types of major sections of dramas. Apart from these 10 types of major uh, types of drama, there are Uparupakas, although it is not mentioned in the Dasarupaka, it is in later period. So Uparupakas, there are many Uparupakas. So some of them are the Trotaka, Sattaka, Goshti, Prankhana, Rasaka, Hallishaka, Bhanika, and so on, come under Uparupakas. Uparupakas means that is again, that is the sub variety of Rupakas. And that Uparupakas has many types of uh, uh, classifications. Out of these, Sattaka is one, 
where all characters stay roughly. Now let us see, according to the chronology, maintaining the history. So of course, we will consider the first ever drama we have in the form of drama. Although it is said that this dramatical uh, exposure have been found in even in Veda, the Yama and Yami Sangwada, the dialogue between Yama and Yami. We, uh, it is said generally that is the origin of the source of the drama, not of it, anyway. But uh, the, the literature surely written for drama, it is we have the first instance ever. It is Asho Gosa's Sari Putta Pakadana. This uh, it is uh, written, although there's controversy uh, taking the date, but the second century BC or so, it is the time of Asho Gosa, where all the character uh, Dushta speaks old Magadhi. There is a character whose name is Dushta or whose character is Dushta. And so he speaks old Magadhi. Later on, Bhasa. Bhasa has many dramas. At the time period is first century BCE to first century CE. So in his uh, some of the uh, dramas like that Pratigya, Yogandharayana, Charu Datta, Avimaraka, and so on, characters as mentioned in the Natya Sastra speak different types of Prakrit according to their social strata. So it is prescribed, although the drama has been written even before Bharata. So Bharata's Natya Shastra, it is a very, very flexible text. And we understand that Bharata has taken all those uh, instances from earlier dramas, as well as he prescribed on that uh, light that the next uh, in, in later dramas in later period the all the dramatists have followed almost the same features uh shudraka the third century bc third century ce sorry in his mrichakatikama used various types of practice so shudraka's mrichakatika is very important text i'll come later on some special feature maybe at the end of the uh, of this uh, session so Shudraga's uh, uh, is very important drama. Now come to the fifth century CE. That is the time of Kalidasa. And in Kalidasa, three major dramas are there. Malavikagnimitram, Vikram Urvashyam, and Avigyana Shakuntalam. So Avigyana Shakuntalam is very famous. Everywhere it is known. So these three types of uh, dramas, three dramas are there. And they're also following the norms of uh, the Bharata's Natya Shastra. The speakers speak different types of Prakrit. I'm not mentioning about Sanskrit. As I told you, the Sanskrit is only one Sanskrit. There is no difference. So, and the, the people, uh, those who live in the uh, higher strata, like the king, devas, races, and so on, they speak Sanskrit. Okay, now come to the Sri Harsha. The period is 600 to 648 CE. In his dramas like Pariyadarshika, Ratnavali, and Nagananda, he used many types of practice. Next comes 7th century, the Bhavavuti, time of Bhavavuti. There is also Mahavira Charitam, Malati Madhavam, and Uttara Rama Charitam. There are so many practices, but, but mostly the Shaurashani practice. Uh, take the major place in those practices. So <clears throat> these are all Sanskrit dramas. <clears throat> Apart from these, that uh, Beni Shanghara of Bhattanarayan, the period is 8th century C. Mudra Rakshasa of Vishakhadatta, it is 9th century C. Lalita Vigra Rajanataka of Somadeva, it is 12th century. Adhubhuta Darpana of Mahadeva, it is the 17th century. Lilavati of Rampani Vada, it is 18th century, etc. I have just uh, recorded some of the names of dramas and dramatists of these periods. And here also the prescription uh, of Bhadaka is followed. Now come that uh, Shattaka, 
that uh, as we know that all the characters speak Prakrit. So the drama was written in Prakrit. All characters speak Prakrit. And in that sense, the first ever that Sattaka is Karpura Manjari, it is written by Raja Sekhara in 10th century C. Other uh, Sattakas which are written in uh, Prakrit is Rambha Manjari, Naya Chandra 14th century C, Chandaleha of Rudra Dasa 17th century C, Vilasavati of Markandeya, it is also 17th century C, and Anand Sundari of Ghanashyama, first part of the 18th century C, and Sringara Manjari of Vishishwara, 18th century, etc. Now, the point to be noted here, the, all the name of the Sattakas actually bear a, a feminine character. So, Karpura Manjari, the name, Chandaleha, uh, Rambha Manjari is the name. Chandaleha means Chandralekha in Sanskrit. It is also name of a uh, woman. Vilasavati, it is also a name of a woman. Ananda Sundari, woman. And Sringada Manjari, woman. So, there is something fine to be noted that all the Sattakas are named by woman. Let us see the next uh, point. <coughs> Uh, now, what is Sattaka? What is the feature of Sattaka? I have only quoted the Prakrit or Sanskrit uh, quotations, but I will speak uh, the translation. Of course, I will translate it. That Sattakam Prakrita Sesha Patyam Syad Praveshakam Nacha Vishkam Bhako Pyatra Tachurascha the Bhuto Rasha. Anka Javanikaya Su Syad Anyam Natika Samam. And the next that it is it is it is it is in uh, Bharata's Natya Sastra. And next one it is quoted from Raja Sekara in his Karpura Manjari. He has given the uh, feature of Sattaka. He says, So Satta Otti Vannai Duram Jo Nadiyai Ansarai. King Una Pavesaka Vikram Bhakaim Kevalangana Bisanti. Let us have very, very easy way, lucid way to understand what is Sattaka. First, we have uh, discussed that all the names of the Sattakas are based on female name. So, that is first characteristic feature of a Sattaka. The Naika, the heroine, the name of the Sattaka will be by the name of the heroine. First condition is there. Now, uh, in Sanskrit drama, there are some formalities from the very earlier days that uh, suppose that introductory sin, then the supporting sin, somebody comes to the stage and he just uh, uh, discuss or he gives some introduction to the drama, what is going to be held like this. So these are called Praveshaka, Vishkambhaka. These are the technical terms in Sanskrit drama. So any introductory scene or supporting scene are avoided in Sattaka. Okay, just there are the benedictory verses and then starts the uh, Sattaka is there. So first thing is there. Second, it is said that that Sattoti Bhannai Duram Jo Nadi Ay Anusarai. Nadi ya means Nati Ka that small play, small drama, it just follows the norms of the small, dra small, small drama. So it is a Sattaka. That means, and it is written there, as Anka act is written for that, for Sanskrit drama. Here it is in place of Anka, it is called Javanika. Javanika. And of course, there are only four Javanikas. Four Javanikas. So, how do you know it is the Prakrit the drama? First thing is it is named by the heroine, by the name of the heroine. Second thing, there is not such introductory portion of like that of Sanskrit. It is Praveshakan Vishkamaka. It follows the norm of a Natika small play. That means that all Sattakas are very small dramas, very small play. All the characters speak Prakrit. Okay. And 
Uh, so uh, this uh, type of features, when we say in the drama, it is called Satnaka. So totally, fully, fully written in Prakrit, it is Satnaka. <coughs> Uh, as I have uh, much affinity with the language, so I cannot uh, prevent myself to speak something on the language part also. Uh, it is not that I am imposing my thinking to you, but uh, we must know the feature of the language and it is through the grammar, it is through the linguistic uh, science. So let us see that uh, grammarians, because grammarians have prescribed also the feature of those dialects and sub dialects. So we cannot ignore the prescription of the grammarians in terms of the speaker of Sanskrit and Prakrit dramas. Let us see. So the grammarians, Prakrit grammarians, so what we have actually from 5th century CE to 17th century CE, there are many grammarians, and these grammarians are named as Vararuchi, Hemachandra, Rivikrama, Purushottama, Kramadishwara, Rama Tarkavagisha, Lakshmidhara, Singharaja, and Markandeya. I have given few names, not all. And it is said that the available grammar, Prakrit grammar, what is available to us, it is as early as 5th century CE, written by Vararuchi. But the grammar, but the rules prescribed in other grammarians, it is said that there were many grammars even before Bodoruchi, even before even the pre Christian era. But those grammars are not available, so we cannot quote those grammars here. So, earliest grammarian it is Bodoruchi. And of course, we can, we can classify those grammarians into two schools. One is the Eastern School of Prakrit Grammarian at the Western School of Prakrit Grammarian. Eastern School of Prakrit Grammarian, it is uh, represented mainly by Vararuchi. And Western School of Prakrit Grammarian, of course, we are lucky here that we are in Gujarat and the place of uh, the uh, Grammarian Hemachandra is uh, Gujarat. So the place where we are, actually Hemachandra represents the Western School of Prakrit Grammarians. And Bharaluchi represents the Eastern School of Prakrit Grammarians. So uh, there are some grammarians, I just mixed up their names here. So uh, Bharaluchi, Trivikra, Bharaluchi, Purushottama, Kramadishara, Rama Tarkava, Agisha, and Markandeya, they represent the Eastern School of Prakrit Grammarians. And whereas Hema Chandra, Trivikrama, Lakshmi Dhara, Simharaja, they belong to the Western School of Prakrit Grammarians. Why these? Uh, two schools of Eastern school and Western school. Why? That is that, that Magadhi Prakrit belongs to the Eastern part of India. Hemachandra has prescribed some sutras, some teachers, those who are not always uh, corresponds to the nature of the Eastern uh, India. Whereas some prescriptions where Vararuchi and other school, other uh, grammarians of Eastern school have prescribed. These are very fit to the speakers of Sanskrit drama, or the, of the characters of the Sanskrit drama. Now let us see that uh, the discuss, the, what, what did they discuss? What are the matters they have discussed? They have discussed the phonology, morphology, optional forms of roots, characteristic features of Prakrit sub-dialects and opponents and so on. Let us just discuss a few. What is phonology? What is morphology and et cetera, et cetera. It is, that is uh, that all the grammars, Prakrit grammars are written in Sanskrit language. All the Prakrit grammars are written in Sanskrit language. So phonology means that this type of uh, word is changing, sound is changing into Prakrit into that type. This type of sound is changing into that type in Prakrit. It is generally called phonology. Phon means a sound. So changing sound, that sound may be the same, like that Sanskrit and Prakrit may be the same. So that is why one term is used, Tat Sama. Tat Sama means that equal with that language, equal with Sanskrit. There are some words, of course, many words are there. They are very much like Sanskrit and Prakrit are same. Suppose 
in in Gujarat, perhaps you 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 say that water as jal, okay, jal. You say jal. We the Bengali people also say jal for water. We cannot say that a jal Bengali jal has come to uh, the uh, that uh, Gujarat and uh, indebted to uh, Bengal. It is not true. Our, on the vice versa, we cannot say that that Gujarati word jal has changed into the same word in Bengal. At the same time, this language is developed. So these are called Tatsama. There are so many words that there that Sanskrit and Prakrit are same. They are called Tatsama. Now, Tadbhava. Tadbhava means which is derived from Sanskrit. Suppose that it is, it is we, we just chanted many, many verses and there, and you see, you noticed, you have noticed that something is different from that of Sanskrit. So this difference is called Tadbhava, that is derived from Sanskrit. It is Prakrit. And of course, uh, that uh, formation of roots of, of verbs, uh, and different types of uh, the features of uh, characteristic features of sub dialects, even uh, the upper branch and latter practice, they have discussed all these things in their grammars. So, that is in a nutshell, I can say. <clears throat> now, uh, it is just Natya Sastra. So, Natya Sastra has prescribed. Uh, I have last in the last portion. I have given some instances as example. So please let me discuss about that. Who are those characters? Speak what language? And this this is what is meant in in the Natya Sastra. So so dramatic prakrit. So in the Natya Sastra, in the chapter eighteen, of you can find you can verify it from the verses thirty one to forty eight. These are the prescriptions of uh, about the speakers who speak uh, Prakrit in Sanskrit dramas. So let us first start. Okay, so you you see that there are red colored some point. It is it is for my ease. I have taken this. Otherwise, I have to read out. It is not good. <coughs> so there are. Uh, it is about the hero of the drama hero of the play. So in, in, in our Indian film industries, usually known as Bollywood film, I don't like to say Bollywood anyway, Indian film industries are like this. So there are uh, the characters, hero, and uh, they, they have made different types of roles and almost the, they can carry the motto of that film or play uh, almost in the whole uh, drama. But uh, in Sanskrit drama, first prescribe how many types of heroes are there. So somebody is self-controlled. That means bhira. It is the Sanskrit term bhira, self-control. The whole drama, his action, his act will be as a self-controlled hero. One type, another type of uh, hero is vehement uddhata. That means he is not self-controlled and he's aggressive like that. One type is the Lalita. It is lighthearted. Okay, he is always uh, bitten by the villain or like that, and <laughs> he cannot uh, conquer. And uh, one type of hero is exalted. Udat is very very free-minded, bindas like that. Okay. And uh, one type of hero is calm, Prashant. His nature is in this drama, he's the hero. He totally, he has the same role like calm. So there are many, many types of uh, uh, heroes are there. Okay. So from now, if we, if we see any, any film, so we can understand that what type of character, the same character is acting all those roles or how many types of roles they are just acting. We can just observe. <laughs> Although that, uh, who, who, is, who can speak properly? So in Arjuna, Arjuna, although he is a Kshatriya, a king, or, uh, or represent the elite society, usually he should speak Sanskrit, but when he takes the disguise of a Brihanala, so he took the disguise 
uh, of Brihanmala. So in that position, he spoke Prakrit, not Sanskrit. In other positions also, the person is a very superior person, but he is intoxicated. So if one is drunk, you know that he cannot control his bias, although he 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 uh, uh, he is in the very very elite class. Although if he is not under control of himself, so he speaks something that uh, it is not proper. So in Prakrit, in dramas also. A superior person when he is intoxicated, speak Prakrit, not Sanskrit. He cannot speak Sanskrit. His mother tongue comes out actually. So, and the, the person overwhelmed by property, by by poverty, with poverty, overwhelmed with poverty. He was a man, very rich man. He could uh, manage his status in the society, but he is now nobody. So he is not getting any any any. Uh, uh, response or any uh, uh, his uh, any any type of response from the elite society, so he is not in a very good mood. So he will speak Prakrit. In case of the disguise of Jain monks, ascetics, religious mendicants, and jugglers, they are also speak Prakrit. In case of children and person possessed of spirit of lower order. Now that it is that uh, influenced by or possessed by spirits, and such person, although he is, he belongs to the elite class, upper class, even then he speak uh, Prakrit. Women in feminine character, though all women generally women speak Prakrit, not Sanskrit, in Sanskrit uh, dramas. I know that there will be lots of questions why uh, why do women speak Prakrit, not Sanskrit. Persons of low birth, lunatics, and fellow worshippers, they all speak Prakrit. But the itinerant recluses, Buddhists, pure Sotriyas, Sotriyas means the Brahmins, those who just uh, do some uh, rituals, they uh, speak actually Sanskrit and uh, they, they don't speak Prakrit. In the case of that, uh, queens, courtesans, and female artists. Uh, to be noted here, queens, courtesans, and female artists. Actually, they have the they have the direct relation or very close relation with the upper class. So that is why they speak Sanskrit, not Prakrit. Uh, in that, in in other sense, that uh, the queen. Uh, she, she can speak Sanskrit at the time that she has some supernatural power to or some astronomical or astrological uh, uh, power she has. So she can understand the language of the birds, language of others. And in that, in that sense, she will speak Sanskrit, not Prakrit. So this type of characters are available in Sanskrit drama. So that is why we can uh, see. <clears throat> Now there is. A, I told you just now that uh, the courtesans are generally they speak Sanskrit because they have the relation or close relation with the elite society, or the uh, or those uh, female characters, those who are that amusing the king, and those characters also speak Sanskrit. Obsidians, that celestial names, they have different types of uh, uh, languages. First, that they are if, if as they are the uh, celestial names, so that is why their primary language is Sanskrit, no problem. But when uh, the celestial names are married with a man of, uh, a, of a, a human being, then her language is changed into Prakrit, not Sanskrit. And uh, some languages, although they are in vogue at the time are not included in the Sanskrit dramas, and it is called that uh, the tribal languages. So Barbaras, Hiratas, Andras, and Dramidas, those languages are not included in the uh, Sanskrit dramas. Now, almost we have done the, the characters who speak Sanskrit and the characters who speak Prakrit. Uh, 
uh, as I discussed yesterday also, Bharata in his Nata Sastra has mentioned seven types of languages used in uh, drama as language, not the sub dialects, not the dialects or sub dialects as language. There are seven types of languages are right here. And that is why that uh, the verse is there. Magadhyavantija pratya, Shaurashanyadha Madhavi, Balika, Dakshinatyacha, Saptabhasa, Prakritika. So seven types of languages are there. So these are the Magadhi, Avantija, Pratya, Saurasheni, Ardhamagadhi, Balika, Dakshinatya. These seven languages are known as the languages mentioned by Bharata in his Natya Sastra. Now, uh, uh, I, I, I am not sure I should dare to speak this uh, matter to you or not, but at least I have to speak, at least for the first time or in a life, maybe one time or something like that. You should know that how do we recognize this type of Prakrit? It is Saurasheni Prakrit, it is Magadhi Prakrit, it is Paisachi Prakrit, it is other types of Prakrit, it is Ardha Magadhi like that, okay? So at least you should know. I have mentioned the sutras. I mentioned the sutras, but, I, but clearly I will say you that uh, the very, very easy, with easy word and easy example that you can relate with your own language, today's language. So of course the first sutra, it is, uh, there are so many sutras. I have chosen only few sutras are there, okay? That is first, it is given by Hemachandra, it is Todunado Shaura Shenyam Ayuktasi. That means in Shaurasheni, in non-initial position, the ta is changed into the. Okay. In non-initial position, in Shaurasheni, of course, that ta is changed into the. Let me give you one example. Suppose the word is tata. Tata, tata means father. Two ta are there. So non-initial position, that is not the initial. The, the second one, ta, will be changing to da. So in Shaurasheni Prakrit, if you say tata in Sanskrit, in Shaurasheni Prakrit, it will be ta da. I am not doing that uh, uh, suffixes now. Only tata is ta da. So second ta is changing, but not the first one. That is the feature of Shaurasheni, one of the Shaurasheni. Second one is adha kvachit. Sometimes adha, adha means the, the below one. When it is the conjunct consonant, double consonant in one place. So lower position is called adha. Adha means the niche, that is that below. Okay. That ta also may be da. Suppose in Shakuntala, the, the frame of Shakuntala, she says hala saundale. So Shakuntala na and ta is there. Even that conjunct position, that ta is changing to da. So how do you identify that it is in Shaurasheni language? So I skip the third one, the come to the fourth word, tho dha. That is, as a ta is changing into da, so tha is changing into dha. And it is, of course, non-initial position. Tha. So when there is tha is changing into dha, suppose na tha, husband, okay, laws, na tha. So it will be nadha, not natha. So this tha will be changed into tha. In case of bhubovha, uh, in Hindi we say ho raha hai, hota hai, hua hai. Is jo ha, this ha is there. This ha actually comes from says from Sanskrit bha to prakrit ha, and that ha is now prevalent in our modern languages. So ho, ho na, even in, in your regional languages, you can understand that ho na, ho raha hai, ho, that ho, there is no relation of ho, but in Sanskrit, it becomes a bha. In Sanskrit, it's called bhavati. This bhavati bha is changing into ho, and that ho is prevalent in our languages. But in Shaurasheni, that bha preserves. In other practice, you will see that bha is changing into ho. But in Shaurasheni, bha becomes a bha, in case of that root, that verb to be, in the sense of to be, okay? I think it is uh, clear now. Session Prakritavad, that means the rest of, there are 26 sutras, 
uh, prescribed by Hemachandra. I have given all the theory. And he says that 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 rest of the features you have to understand from the features of Prakrit, general Prakrit, that means Maharashtra Prakrit. Okay. <clears throat> I am not going details in these uh, slides, but just to give you some. Uh, so I told you that Avanti is a sub dialect of Saurashani. So that is why it has some relation with Saurashani. If it is totally Saurashani, so it will not be the sub dialect. That means it, it will be called as Saurashani. So that, that means there are some relations with other language. So that is why it is said it is the mixture of Saurashani and Maharashtra. So that is called Avanti. In the case of that Balliki, the seven languages are there. Valiki. So Valiki, so in, in, in drama, the cheat, uh, the person uh, the, who is doing some sinful act. So his language is Valiki. And Ardhamagadi, as we told the study, that Ardhamagadi is the language of the joint canonical text. But in, in, in Sanskrit drama, the speakers, those who are uh, doing the role of a Jain monk, he uses Ardhamagadi. Some other characters also speak Ardhamagadi. And it is said that in case of, uh, it is not very far, it's, 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 uh, it's a feature, characteristic features are not very far from Shorshani. So it is very close, it is very related to Shorshani. So these are uh, the languages, what Bharata mentioned, I have, uh, so Magadi. Magadi is very important. Uh, Prakrit, it is the Eastern Prakrit, and it represents the uh, almost all Eastern languages. Bhojpuri, Maithili, Oriya, Chhattisgarhi, Bengali, Assamese, even whole Bangladesh, and all the, the Magadi is the source origin of those languages. So how do we identify, how can we identify that Magadi Prakrit? So that uh, it is said that Atayat Sokumsi Magadhyam, that means it must be that uh, masculine gender. It should be all ending masculine gender. And that masculine gender all ending word will be changed into a ending. That means that suppose in Sanskrit, we say Rama, Rama in Sanskrit. If we say in Prakrit, general Prakrit, it should be Ramo because, because there is no Visarga in Prakrit. Ramo, it will be O. This O will be changed into A in Magadhi Prakrit. So we have to say Lame. The law will be changed into law also. So Lame. So A ending word of nominative singular. Okay, you are Bengali and you understand that. We say Say Jai. He goes. He goes. Say Jai. Not show. Not Saha. Say Jai. Loke Bale. People speak. Loke. People speak. Okay. Baghe Dhoreche. Caught by the tiger, baghe, sape kamreche, okay, that it is bitten by a snake. So that is why I'm telling you that it is the uh, latter form of Magadhi, it is preserved in Bengali and Eastern languages. So this is very, and in Sanskrit drama, especially, the most important Sanskrit drama we know that it is Abhigyana Shakuntalam. And in Abhigyana Shakuntalam, they are the, in sixth chapter, sixth act. There's a very good character and some Magadhi speakers are there and some dialogues are there so we can find. And in case of that, I am not doing all other uh, uh, features of Magadhi, only we, I will say that in case of that nominative symbol, that is all ending word, masculine gender, it is A ending. A raw is changing into law and all civilians are changed into palatal shock. So here we Bengali people, we think that we can pronounce dental so very particularly, but we cannot. We speak, so we, we write sa, but we pronounce sha, sha like that. It is sangvada, shangvada, not sangvada. We say shangvada. We say not santosh. We say shantosh. All saws are the same. So it is uh, in the, the Magadhi practice is preserved in our local languages. So I'm not going all other features. Let us have that Shakari. So Shakari, when we come Shakari, it means that uh, 
those who speak palatal sha in place of other sa's so such a uh, such a such a important character we can find in the mrichakatikam and the mrichakatikam in that drama the villain shakara he speaks shakari the sub dialect of magadhi now let us have some light moment in early 80s there is a, there was a film utsav yes indian from the indian film industries <laughs> okay and the hero was that shekhar suman heroine was rekha and a villain was shashi kapoor the the subject matter is a little bit changed there <clears throat> last of all that the villain was very much a uh, curious or enticed uh, basanta sena that the heroine and after all last of all that uh, that heroine she accepted uh, the villain but uh, in original drama it is not actually anyway so that character it is called he is called shakara he is he, he speaks sha palatal sha every year palatal sha so i am not going to uh, who is a shakara so one uh, one grammarian markandeya he says that he is the brother in law of the king and of course not the brother of his bona fide wife after all this like this type of characters it is called a shakara of course he represents one community although he is he he just plays a character anyway he represents a community uh, so there are some sub dialects i am not going with the those uh, very very minute uh, discussion of this so chandali shabari audri and avari avidi these are the sub dialects and uh, takki or takki or dhakki dhakki means the modern language of dhaka it has uh, uh, both the names of takki and dhakki so so for vibhasha for sub dialects there are seven languages he have mentioned he has mentioned seven languages that the dialects languages and some vibhasha means something different from that main language so he has mentioned shakara vira chandala savira shabara dravidan bhaja kina bane chara anancha vibhasha nataki singa these are called the language is the shakara avira chandala shabara dravid andhra etc these languages are called vibhasha uh in the natya shastra it is mentioned that who will speak that magadhi dialect or pracha the sub dialect of uh, the uh, saurasheni etc etc who will be the uh, speaker of that that is the verses are there i have not going to repeat those verses so there are certain characters it is mentioned they will speak different types of prakrit and uh, okay let us see some some example of from the texts and uh, i can just uh, okay just the last line you see that uh, first i have written in romanized form and then it is a devanagari form so i told you that hala sound dale sound sakun kala sound dale this da is there okay etta daba mohottam chitta so the language is quite different than that of prakrit the sanskrit now i want to discuss something with you you see that if we if we say that uh, prakrit is quite different than sanskrit it is not proper because uh, till now we understand that the king speaks sanskrit and this uh, female characters those who are very close to this this people they speak prakrit saurasheni prakrit of course so if these are the foreign languages to each other how can they understand to each other so this uh, theory this logic says that sanskrit and prakrit are not very different in as far as uh, their uh, characteristic features are concerned okay <coughs> so 
So in the last uh, line also here in this uh, uh, slide, uh, that Manusha, I told you that in the sixth act of the Abhigyan Shakuntalam, the character that uh, fisherman, that fisherman is, uh, is uh, speaking Magadhi Prakrit. So you see that here palatal shaw is there, Pashi Dantu Bhava Mishse, O Lord, O great man, okay, you just become, he is requesting. Hage na idisha kamakali. Hage, hage means oh, I am not a doer of such type of act. Sunada darling, please listen. Hage shakkavadala bhantarala basi divale. Hage means oh, I, I am the dweller of shakravatara, one place, one titha place. Okay. I am the dweller of that place and I am a dhivara. Dhivara means I am a fisherman. So the wa le. So ra is changing to la and nominative singular that all ending word is turning to a diva le. So you will find this type of uh, features there. Uh, perhaps this is the last slide, and I'll take some time with this. Okay. Now again, the character, the villain of Marichakatika. He says. Uh, to the heroine Basant Sena. King Yashi Dhavasi Palasi Pakhalanti Vasu Pashida na Malishasi Chittadava Kamena Dajjadi Hume Hadage Tavasi Angala Lashi Padide Diyavam Shakhande. You see that everywhere palatal shah is there, not dental saw other saw. Okay. And uh, Oh, it is time is so time over. So I am not I'm not taking much. Okay, only a few minutes, only two, three, five minutes. Okay. So he says though that uh, why are you leaving? Why are you why are you running away? Oh, beautiful woman, please stay here. My heart or my last is now burning like that. The piece of burning coal is fallen uh, uh, falls on the place like this this is again that uh, other is there esha nanaka mushi kama kashika matcha shika la shika ninna sakulana shika avashika kama samanju shika esha vesha bahu shuvesha nila veshangana veshya isi si dasa nama ke mai kale adya dhima mucha di he is just uh, trying to impress that uh, uh, Heroine Vasanta Sena, and he says, Nanak Musi, you are the you are the stealer, you are the thief of Buddhist coin. You are the whiff of lust. You are fond of of, of fish eating. You are the dancer. Your nose is not so much uh, beautiful. You can destroy any any cool any any clan you you are that uh, you uh, you can control anybody and you are the casket of love you are the prostitute etc 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 and saying so he wants to embrace that lady and we know very well it is impossible he acts like a foolish person but he is very intelligent it has different type of meaning. If in question answer session, if anybody asks me, then I will discuss, otherwise let me stop here. Only one thing I will say to you, that there are another type of Prakrit, it is called Paisachi. The Paisachi Prakrit is belong to the one sect, is it Pishacha, those who are forest dweller in the name of the, the Paisachi. Somebody says it is from Northwestern part of India, some says it is a southern prakrit. So there are the reason, and uh, that is why there are some speciality in this language. In place of la, it is said ra, neither ra, not la, but it is cerebral ra, which is used in, in Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, in South India. So that is why, again, it is said that uh, it may be that South Indian language, 
Some says because the Vedic mantra that Agni Mirai Purohitam that is arise there. So if it is Vedic and Aryans came from outside, so northern part of India or northwestern part of India, that is the evidence of Paisachi Prakrit. Some says no, it is the uh, it is the uh, feature of southern Prakrit because in Tamil Nadu and everywhere, Ara is used. So in that sense, it is so. Now another feature is there that uh, you know that very it was very, the the song was very viral. Yohani, Manike Mage Gite, a baby in my house. Very good romantic song. Okay, Manike Mage Gite, Gite, Gite means heart. Hridaya in Paisachi Prakre. The Hridaya sa Hita Paka. That the term Hridaya is changing into Hita Paka. And this compels us to think that Paisachi might be the Southern Indian languages that has been the uh, influence even up to that uh, Sri Lanka. So even today it is found. And I think that uh, I have tried my best to uh, present uh, my, my, my uh, subject to you, but I don't know how much it is acceptable to you. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs>